Okay, uh, well, welcome to this hearing via Zoom of the Local Historic District Commission. Our purpose is to aid property owners in the town in preserving and protecting the distinctive characteristics and architecture of buildings and places significant in the history of Amherst. Um, we are conducting this via Zoom. Um, members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone, and a hyperlink to the hearing will be posted on the town's online calendar. We've got four uh, hearings that we're going to hear today. We require one of three certificates to ensure that new construction and most alterations of exterior architectural features in the district meet requirements. And so we will be reviewing those applications for those uh, certificates. Uh, and we're going to begin with uh, Mr. Malloy summarizing the application, then the applicant uh, will speak, and then members of the commission will ask questions for clarification or additional information, and then we'll invite comments from and questions to the commission from members of the public. Um, so uh, I think we should start with Mr. Malloy. Uh, and the first uh, one that's before us. And I don't know the order of these, Nate, so. Oh, yeah, sure. It'd be 37 Cosby Ave. OK. If anyone's here for um, any attendees here, can you raise your hand and we can move you over to panelists? I think I see. Yes. Oh, I should call the meeting. Call. Do we do we need to do a roll call? Uh, yeah, we probably should just to uh, make it. Just to say who's uh, present. So, mm -hmm. uh, Elizabeth? Here. Steve? Here. Bruce? I'm here. Karen? Here. Nicole? Here. Frida? Here. And I'm here, and uh, Nate. Okay, proceed. All right. Yeah. The um the first application is for thirty seven Cosby. It's in addition to a, a we'll call it an accessory structure. So there's a an existing structure, and they're proposing to put a one story addition on it. Um, you know, it does need land use permitting, which it it'll be going through. So it also needs local historic district approval. The um oh, let me just pull up. Uh, I'll share my screen. If this is visible for everyone, yeah. yep. So the the this this rectangle right here, thirteen by sixteen, is proposed to be the new addition. This is a property survey, and so this is the existing uh, accessory dwelling or ex accessory structure. And here is the addition. Here are some drawings that had been previously approved by the zoning board. So, a one story, um, you know, new construction. So clapboard siding, windows to match existing. Um, you know, slow pitch to the roof. It's a slab. Um, I think it's a slab or a crawl space, a crawl space. Um, but, you know, there's no, um, with some vents there and an entry. So, you know, it's to me, you know, everything they said would match what's there. So uh, windows, roofing material, siding, uh, you know, kind of the massing and scale is all pretty uh, proportional. And so, um yeah, I don't really have too many comments on on it. Uh, there's the window schedule where you can see they've you know it's um they provided that uh, with the double hung windows um, at the door. And so um, you know, I think the only other thing that I you know I was thinking about as we we're looking at as I was looking at this is you know if there's any exterior lighting or any other site um, work that isn't shown on these on the plans, would be the time to talk about it in terms of, you know, vertical structures or things that would be part of the local historic district review. So although this is just about the structure, you know, we've asked, you know, if the applicant has anything they'd want to present as their, um, as their presentation, they could go over that. Uh, Joan, did you want to speak? Thank you, everyone. Uh, actually, I'm going to defer to my husband since he originally built that 10 page structure and he knows 
intimate more details than I do. So, but thank you all. Uh, thank you for coming. Do you want to speak? Well, I, I don't have anything to say. I will uh, accept any questions from you and respond accordingly. So the one question that's come forward so far is, will there be any outdoor lighting? Um, yes. And so presently on 10 page, over each egress, there is a, uh, a down lighting uh, that was approved 15 years ago. Uh, so we don't have light pollution. And so uh, the front entrance on 10 page is not being changed. So the side current side entrance, we're going to reuse the same uh, copper down lighting and use it for the secondary egress. Yes, that's that's the present one. Thank you. Yes. Uh, good, agreed. I, we walked by today and it's just a charming little building. So you did a really nice job when you originally built it. So I'm pleased that the new addition will be keeping with the old, with the feeling of the building that you already built. Thank you. Are there other questions? I, I agree with Greta. I did the same. I walked in, I walked around it. I felt a little intrusive because, <laughs> uh, but I felt, well, uh, there are seven of us, and probably I'm not the first. So, but it's a it's a lovely little place. We've been in this neighborhood before with other buildings in in the past seven years that I've been here. So, and I think this will uh, uh, nothing but add, you know, slightly enrich the neighborhood with a slightly more elaborate uh, house. I I think from other points of policy points of view as well, it's a good idea. But from our point of view, I see nothing that would cause me to. Uh, um, hesitate to grant a certificate of appropriateness. And the posts that are in the ground right now, is that the footprint for this edition? The, the footprint for the edition is 13 by 16, mm -hmm. one story, yes. Yep. And um, you've got uh, you've got a couple of one by three stakes that are coming out of the ground about six feet at the corners. Is that correct? That is appro uh, approximately the, uh, the outside corners. Yes. Okay. It looks like it's, it's in keeping with uh, everything else around it. Uh, it looks like it'll be quite nice. Do we have other questions? Betty. I had a question. Um, I too went, I went by yesterday and I, I thought it looked, um, uh, Perfectly appropriate, exact, uh, very much the same as what Bruce said. My question was about the spacing and the amount of space on the lot for it. Uh, Nate, you alluded to some questions regarding that, and I wondered what those were. So the um, the um, owners received a special permit to build that um, uh, maybe 15 or so years ago. And so to do this addition, they have to, you know, because there's a special permit on the property, they have to either modify it or do something with that permit. So there's not necessarily an issue to do it. They just have to go through the process. So, you know, it's, um, you know, it's something that they're working through with another planner to go to the zoning board. Um, and it, you know, I, I think it can be accomplished one of two ways, but maybe one way is easier. And so they've been, you know, I don't, to me, it's not like there's um, an issue that it may or may not happen. It's just they have to go through that land use permitting. I mean, it's a, it's a discretionary permit from the zoning board, but knowing that they had granted one previously and it's a smaller addition, um, you know, I'm not sure that there's a, I don't see any reason why they wouldn't. But, but that's, um, that's not our concern, strictly speaking, is it? I mean, uh, probably the zoning board would be interested to know that we have no problems rather than the other way around. Right. It's not as if it's encroaching on a setback or there is some issue in terms of that, you know, that relationship to the street or to the property line. It's just a matter of how it was permitted previously. Well, if there are no further questions, uh, then we can move to a vote whether to uh, approve the certificate. 
Uh, before we do, I just wanted to share my screen quickly. I know Bruce had pulled up the um, the light fixture, but this is uh, you know here's another ver you know view of it uh, with a gooseneck, and you know it's a downcast. Oh, you know, sorry, I guess I hadn't clicked that. Is that now? Is that visible now? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So here's the entry light that Bruce had been um, showing, and so this is you know um, Google Street View from 2011. So that shows you know what it what it will look like and what it you know. Interesting. Oh, one. Yeah. It's a different fixture. It's the wrong color. <laughs> it's a, yeah. So it's it's the only oh. one. It's the um. Here's a more recent one, or you know, it's I, just I, not picking up the color. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, it's a very cute little house. Uh, are we ready to vote? I guess uh, uh, I would move uh, uh, granting oh, a certificate of appropriateness. So do we need to do anything else, Nate? Uh, do we need a second. I uh, second. Well, I'll say um, before you. Sorry, before I cut even off, Nancy. There's um, a few hands raised, so I don't know if we would take public comment oh. before. Oh, of course. Right. Yes. yes, we should take yeah. public comment. All right, Peggy, you're allowed to unmute yourself. Hey, Peggy, your hand is raised. Oh, yeah. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. I, d I just want to reiterate what Greta said. I live on Page Street um, and uh, spent most of my life in a lot of my life in Dublin. And this is my perfect carriage house muse. It is an architectural gem. It's going to be even more so. And it's just, it, it adds so much pleasure to this street, quite simply. Thank you for that comment. Do we have other? People? Yep. Let me just, um, Peggy, I'll, I'll put you back as an attendee. Uh, or, all right, Jesse. Hello, everyone. Jesse Major. Um, I live on 32 Cosby across from 37. Um, as someone who just walks by this lot daily and knows the plans very well, I uh, also have no objection. I think it'll be a great addition to uh, 10 page. So that's all. Thanks. Thank you for coming, Jesse, and for making that comment. Do we have anyone else? I don't see any hands, any other hands raised. Uh, if we have a second then to Bruce's motion, we can move to a vote. I second. OK. Uh, Betty? Yes. Steve? Yes. Bruce? Yes. Greta? Yes. Nicole? Yes. Karen? Yes. And I say yes also. So uh, thank you for coming to our hearing and for presenting so much information in advance. That was very helpful. Uh, and we will be granting you your certificate. Thank you all. Thank you. Thanks. The next one should be the uh, Main Street, Emily Dickinson Museum. Yeah, let me just... Uh... There's someone with a raised hand. Yeah, I'm having tr trouble. Let's see. All right, there we are. They should be promoted to panelists shortly. Welcome to our meeting, Shantia. Uh, would you like to speak to this? We post? have uh, Jane Wall should be also. Oh, sure. There. Yes. Yes, hi. Hi, thank you for coming also, Jane. So uh, Mr. Malloy will begin by giving us a summary and then we'll hear your comments. Sure, I'll keep it brief. I think they have a little presentation if they'd like. Uh, you know, the museum has been working on uh, reconstructing a carriage house that been, uh, had been on site of the Evergreens. Uh, they'd been before the Historical Commission and presented it, I guess, just like last month. And the commission didn't, um, you know, they thought it was a good project and voted to support it. Uh, and so they're here now to, discuss kind of that, you know, that addition. So it's a new structure. Um, 
if you're looking at the evergreens to the east on the site, um, and it had been something that was probably in existence up until the mid 20th century. Uh, I think they'll describe that more. So it's a, a new structure in the Dickinson district. Uh, again, it also you need other permitting um, and that's, you know, that's happening and review by the state uh, Massachusetts Historical Commission. So there's a process to have this, this project move forward. All right, and then we'll move to Jane and Gentia to hear uh, your presentation. Okay, well, thank you. Um, thanks for giving the Emily Dickinson Museum a few minutes this afternoon to describe this project and to ask for a certificate of appropriateness. Um, we have a, we can share a, a PowerPoint uh, presentation that shows you some of the kind of photographic documentation that we have and might be of interest to you and also um, some photographs of uh, views from uh, public ways in case you um, haven't had a chance to, to swing by. So I will um, I'll sh begin sharing. Um, so um, really our intention is to reconstruct uh, a 19th century carriage house uh, that was uh, on the property um, that you can see here to the east of the uh, evergreens, <clears throat> a view from Main Street. Um, and our intention really is to use this uh, new uh, construction first as our visitor tour center and shop while uh, a final phase of homestead restoration is underway and then ultimately use the interior as a program and education space with the exterior uh, resembling as much as possible the historic carriage house as it stood on once stood on the property. Um, because this is new construction, um, we've uh, we've opted to construct it to meet passive house standards, um, which uh, are designed to conserve energy, uh, use use very little energy, uh, and have some um, cer certain differences in its construction from or ordinary um, construction. Uh, but it's part of our part of our ongoing and increasing work to make the museum as sustainable as possible from an energy perspective, while it's still compatible with the historic setting and the historic structures. So because of the museum's several designations, um, uh, first as a contributing property in the Dickinson National Register District and also in the local district, uh, and um, it, and because of the, the fact that the State Historical Commission holds a uh, preservation deed restriction uh, in perpetuity on the structure and the property, um, you know, we uh, try uh, as much as possible to adhere to the Secretary of the Interior standards, and in this case, standards for reconstruction. Um, so I won't uh, go through all of these right now, but if uh, they're of interest in a discussion period, then we can um, take them up. Um, so I wanted to show you some of the documentation we've put together uh, that gives us a sense of what the structure should look like. Um, so here first is the uh, Lucian Burley lithograph from 1886. Uh, and you can see uh, here uh, beside the evergreens, uh, the carriage house that uh, perhaps has uh, had some artistic, a little bit of artistic license taken with it. Um, but then we've also fairly recently come across a photograph from roughly 1875. So we know this, this photograph has to be after 1867 because of uh, for the first church is, is there in place. And it's probably a little bit after 1870, um, thinking that this photograph may have been taken from the Tower of Walker Hall on the Amherst College campus. Uh, at right, of course, is a is a um, close up, uh, closer view of the carriage house itself. In our own collection, we came across a few snapshots. These are probably from the mid nineteen thirties, and uh, the chief feature of these is this is that um, this is at a point where perhaps some vines are are overtaking and perhaps overwhelming this uh, this little structure, at, which was either fell down or was pulled down in the 1950s. 
And then among the other uh, items we've uh, put into our documentation package is a 1910 Sanborn Fire Insurance Company map um, with the evergreens located at the top right of this uh, of this sheet, and then a close up uh, that shows what at that time is being labeled a storage uh, structure. Uh, and this fire insurance map tells us that the carriage house at this point was two stories tall with a metal roof. Um, and then one last one last item is um, a, a page from uh, Andrew Jackson Downing's Architecture of Country Houses. And this is a this is a book that we know Austin Dickinson owned and referred to uh, and probably was a, a good statement of his own inclination toward um, Italianate architecture as embodied in his own house. But the, the, my main uh, purpose in, in sharing this with you is uh, just the rough dimension of this, uh, of this stable, which was a, is roughly the same dimension that we're um, that we're aiming for with uh, with the reconstruction of the carriage house. So our, the carriage house we plan is 24 feet by 34 feet. Uh, it's partly based on the results of archaeology done on the site in 2001, which um, uncovered some some of the footings. Uh, was able to distinguish the interior space from the exterior space. Uh, and also shows that there is a walkway from the Evergreens shed to what was then the west door of the carriage house that's still in place to this day. Um, the GIS uh, site map for Amherst for the property is here and the approximate location of the carriage house, the proposed location, you can see here. Um, so for existing views, um, here we're looking at the northeast corner of the evergreens from the lawn between the homestead and the evergreens. And on the right is uh, looking directly um, looking directly west from the uh, from the homestead. And the red arrows show you the the, the location, the archaeological location of the uh, previously standing carriage house. Um, another view from a public way is uh, from directly across Main Street, on the south side of Main Street, looking north, uh, and then a view uh, northeast towards the Evergreens from, from Main Street. And then finally, um, a view south from Lessie Street, looking down the slope toward the Evergreens with the red arrow uh, pointing to the location of the the former location and the proposed location of the carriage house. And then um, from way over on Triangle Street, looking west, um, which is not, the Evergreens is not especially discernible in that, in that photograph. Um, so I'd like to ask uh, Shanti Underhagen, who's our uh, preservation management consultant to, um, there are just a few more slides that will help with the site plan uh, and with materials. Uh, and a few design details. Jane, do you want to just, I'll just have you advance. You want to yep. keep doing that? Okay, so we'll go to the next one. So um, as Jane mentioned, uh, there was archaeology in this um, area of the property in 2001. And in fact, there's there's been quite a bit of archaeology across the, quote, campus of the museum. Um, so a lot is known about what uh, occurred on this property. Um, so the carriage house, the proposed location um, is uh, quite close to what we understand the location of the historic um, carriage house to have been. And then there was the question of um, how do we uh, address getting to, to the carriage house? Um, as many of you, I think, recall, the path between the evergreens and the homestead was uh, reconstructed um, just a couple, less than a couple of years ago. Um, so that was restored. Um, so we had this uh, question of, of how we cross the path. Um, and Shanti, there are... Could you make oh. this full screen, please? 
Uh, Jane, could you hit slideshow up at the top, please? And that will, that should do it. Um, yeah, a little. Uh, but I've got to get my uh, my Zoom bar out of the way to, to do okay. that. Yeah. Um, so uh, in essence, we have um, uh, created a site plan that um, <clears throat> uses much of the existing driveway and then extends it toward the mm -hmm. carriage uh, barn in a way that we, um, you know, anticipate historically it would have happened. Um, we do have some code issues in terms of um, access and parking. So we've added a little bit of a spur to the east. Uh, you can see in the lower portion of the, of the slide. Um, this will um, be essentially a gravel um, driveway. We're still working through specifically what materials, but we're um, working hard to avoid asphalt. Um, Jane, anything to add on that before we move on? Um, we specific, more specifically, we're um, aiming for some um, kind of stone dust and gravel combination. The path between the houses, uh, its surface is compacted stone dust as an accessible surface, and we want to uh, try to make, remain as consistent within that uh, that appearance and that function as possible. Next slide. We've been working with um, EDM Studio out of Unionville, Connecticut uh, on a design. We've been uh, hashing this out for um, almost eight months now. Um, and um, because of the commitment to a sustainable, energy efficient building, um, we have um, made some decisions uh, about materials in order to get passive house certification for the building. Um, we believe that the materials we've chosen meet the Secretary of the Interior's standards for reconstruction in that they recreate the appearance um, of what the historic materials uh, would have looked like. Um, and I'll go through those um, while we're looking at this, and then there's more detail in the next slide. But um, in essence, at the lower right, you see the south facade. So as you approach up the, the driveway, um, you'll see uh, two uh, glass doors. The doors on the side will uh, close at night, so it will have the appearance that we saw in the downing uh, sketch, actually, of um, barn, barn doors that essentially close, carriage doors that close. Um, at the uh, left, uh, east and west, you see uh, a limited number of window openings because we believe this building uh, would not have had a huge number of window openings, but given the current use or the proposed use, um, you know, we need a bit of light. Um, so uh, there's also an entry on the lower left in the west elevation, which will be a staff entrance. And then at the rear, which is, as you saw a couple of slides ago, really minimally visible. And that those slides, by the way, were just a month ago in January. So it's, it's as you all know, living in Amherst, significantly more uh, uh, vegetative for much of the year. So this uh, upper right north elevation, uh, we believe is essentially not visible. Um, you'll see a dormer, small dormer on the roof plane, that north roof plane that will have a number of fixed, uh, excuse me, uh, awning windows. Um, so um, in terms of materials, um, let's stay on this slide, Jane, while I describe the materials. We do have a list in the next slide, but the siding is going to be something we hope called boral, which is a, a polymer and a coal ash blend. It's gonna be a shiplap, vert vertical shiplap uh, so it will recreate the historic appearance. It's a material that holds paint uh, substantially better. And unlike the PVC products that are often uh, used, it is not subject, subject to uh, expansion and contraction in the same way. So it's a very interesting product. Metal roof to match what's on the evergreens. It's recycled steel and aluminum. Um, the front entry door is a glass uh, fiber reinforced PVC door, but again, that will have the uh, shiplap doors that will close at night. The staff door in the lower left uh, will be a plywood veneer 
wood frame plywood veneer with recycled uh, urethane foam, which creates its insulative qualities. And then at the dormer upper right, um, uh, fiberglass um, casement, excuse me, awning windows. Um, I'd like to go to the next uh, slide, Jane, uh, actually two slides. So there are the materials. I'd like to talk to you about these windows because we've come up with a very, I believe, creative solution for the east and west windows. There are three of them. And this, this was a mountain to climb with Passive House um, because windows are obviously a very sensitive energy component of buildings. Um, what we are proposing is um, for the energy efficient piece of this construction is a uh, Pella traditional reserve uh, fixed pane window. And over that, we propose to do a traditional wooden storm sash, six, six lights over six lights, so a 12 light storm sash, which is uh, identical to one found on the north elevation of the Evergreen's main block. Jane, can we go back two slides, please? Yeah, so you can see in the lower uh, left, the architect is showing you the um, wooden storm window that will overlay the frame of the uh, Pella window. And so essentially recreate the appearance of a storm window. Um, and that will be uh, custom made out of uh, wood. Uh, I think we're ready to move on beyond materials and for the moment. Are you going to take this, Jane, or shall I? You uh, be my guest, please. Okay. So here's the current view from Main Street, just standing across the street. And then on the next slide, uh, we'll show you the architect's um, rendering of uh, what the carriage uh, house uh, will look like. And that is uh, all we have for you today. And thank you for taking time to consider this. We're, we're really excited. It's, it's taken quite a while with the Passive House to come up with uh, a, a really good approach. And we're, we're delighted in where we've landed. Hope you will be too. This is very nicely planned and uh, I'm excited about it, but I'd like to hear what the other uh, members of the commission feel. Questions? Betty. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so glad you're doing this. Um, is it heated? Is it winterized? It is. Um, it's going to be pretty much airtight. Uh, it's got one mechanical unit that's on your materials uh, list. Let me just tell you what it is so you have. Um, so it is, it's a heat pump unit. Um, there's only one. It's on the north elevation. Um, and it is a Mitsubishi four-ton inverter heat pump. Uh, it's about 42 wide, 13 deep, and 52 inches high. It's going to have a one-foot high stand, as they all do, and it'll have a concrete mounting pad. But again, on the elevation that is uh, the least visible. Um, it's on the out exterior on the east yes. side? Nor what north side, north? so the back side. Okay. Um, and air conditioning too as well? Yes. Thanks. That unit does both. Other questions? Uh, Bruce. Uh, further to... Um, the line of inquiry on the heat pump. I uh, I think, uh, do I recall correctly that the the roof would then be shedding down on top of where the heat pump uh, outdoor compressor condenser unit is located? Um, the reason for the question is that being the case, uh, you might end up wanting to put a, a shelter over it because we... ice falling on that thing is not going to be a good uh, thing to happen to it. Um, the, the architect has uh, proposed half round gutters, um, not not across both elevations, as I recall, Jane. Is it just the back elevation? So there is a there is a gutter proposed for that north elevation. I'm sorry, I should have included that. Yeah, that might uh, suffice. Uh, I'm only thinking that if you want to add this. Uh, 
uh, structure or protective structure to the heat, outdoor heat pump unit, you'd be coming back again and as opposed to uh, asking for the permission now. Um, uh, but it's 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 possible that uh, that half run gutter will do the job. Uh, you might end up putting some snow. Uh, the the roof has on... the the roof has snow guards proposed. Yeah. Also. Okay, so that's probably going to hold it on. So that's just, um, I'm familiar with the borel, just so that others in the commission know it's uh, it's exactly as described: a very stable, uh, durable, and uh, um, appropriate i think material for a material that wants to look like it's uh was once uh you know uh, uh well, well it looks like what a, a historic re re replication but something that isn't going to require the amount of maintenance uh and will have the length of life so it's a good choice it's expensive but it's a good choice i think and the other materials i think you're used to um the uh the carriage house initially was a carriage house, I suppose, and this doesn't. This is not going to be a carriage house. This is really more programmable, more program functional um, space. Uh, that's correct. It's uh, it's, that's it's right. certainly above it is. I it looked like it was entirely going to be that. Uh, I don't think we care about that, do we, Nate? I mean, uh, it's uh, the function is not important to us. Right, right. Yeah, it's not really. Okay. I mean, it'd be crazy to build another carriage house, but it's not crazy to build a house that's like a carriage house that serves your purpose, I think. I uh, I think that's it for me for now. I, I'm probably forever. We'll see. Are there other questions? If not, I was going to jump in, uh, kind of like the last one, if there's any signs or lighting <laughs> You know anything else that could be as you know incorporated into this project so this doesn't necessarily need another review so like you know if, if as there are lights near the any of the entryways or anything planned for that yes i think we'd have excuse me simple down lighting uh by both entrances the main entrance and the staff entrance to the west and i believe um Correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe we included in the application uh, signage at the sort of the mouth of the driveway, similar to what is currently at the mouth of the homestead driveway. Uh, we expect that uh, the carriage house is going to become the the main point of entry for, for visitors uh, when it's when it's occupied. Uh, at that point, we would take the uh, the signage down from the homestead uh, while we are working on the restoration of the rear portion, the rear addition as our final phase. There was an image uh, in the original submission uh, of the sign that Jane is referring to. So that's in the packet that we submit. I think in the narrative, Nate. Yeah, I was about to share my screen. Okay. So this welcome sign would be moved, is that right? Right, that's right. And for the type of lighting, do you know what the fixture would look like? Uh, we haven't made the specific selection yet. Uh, were there lights uh, ever? Um, his, installed in the early days of electricity on this building that would be used as a model for an exterior light? I, uh, I'm not sure we know that. Uh, yeah. We know that there was, um, you know, there was a gas lantern at the end of the, of the walk of the main house, that is uh, at the gate between Main Street and the walk up toward the Evergreens. Hmm. Um, we know electricity was introduced into the Evergreens probably around 1895. Uh, the the carriage house, uh, of course, was pre you know it was already standing by that time. Um, but we don't 
we don't specifically know whether um, there were, you know, gas fixtures fixed in place or whether there was, you know, lanterns were used. Hmm. I mean, in my experience, working with historic buildings and trying to put exterior lights in and so forth and not get into the discussion about whether they are appropriate or not, um, if there's a porch or some kind of awning or something, you can stick the light in as a down light and it's uh, hidden completely. And and when the light is not on, it's not visible. And when it is on, it's uh, it's simply light. It's no fixture. But you don't have any uh, facility to uh, any uh, architectural embellishment that would allow you to put a light up underneath i don't suppose um do you hmm. we we don't and as closely as we've looked at the photographic evidence we 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 don't see any suggestion of yeah of it's that. just that the the building code these days uh yeah. if you have a, a door you have an exterior light and you probably also got to have an exterior electrical outlet and so forth so the uh, and I, I imagine that you're going to follow the you're going to be obliged to follow the building code in those two regards. Yes. The, the the exterior outlet is sufficiently uh, uh, unobtrusive thing that I don't think anybody would care, certain or even probably notice. But the light, something else. Mm -hmm. I know we had a bit of a discussion on the planning board with the lights on the Jones Library recently, and. Uh, and the the, uh, the 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 topic uh, related to preserving the lights that were now that's a building from the twenties, not from the earlier nineteenth century. So they were using exterior lights. You know, I, I think when when in the eighteen nineties you would not. I don't think electricity was uh, electric lighting was so evolved that they would stick it outside at that point. It would probably take a few years before that happened. At the Jones, though, they were doing that, and we and they were kind of bulbous lamps that were um, they didn't comply at all with the downcast lighting requirements. So there was a discussion as to whether it was whether we should obligate them to. Uh, and Jane, you're probably involved in that because you're also involved in the library, I think. But but uh, here we don't really have the same kind of. Uh, conversation necessarily because there wasn't those lights so i think if, if the lighting is put there um probably we would like to see it downcast or choose some fixture that that wasn't uh, a bright sparkly uh uh bulb because it's uh, i mean at the library eventually we thought well maybe the bright sparkly bulbs would probably be good because a there's many there's quite a few of them and b it was you know in a a, a brighter, a, a, a vital part of town, but down here it's a fairly quiet part of town, and and having a bright light sitting in the middle of it would probably be a little this uh, awkward looking, maybe. Right. So, yeah. all a long, long, long diatribe just to suggest that for the light that you need to, you will be obligated to put there, probably something like I don't know the gooseneck light fixture that we saw on the previous applicant strikes me as something that would perhaps be applicable, but something certainly from a downcast lighting point of view and something that's not um, too egregiously modern. Yeah, I was, uh, I rather liked that gooseneck also. Yeah. yeah. And then just to I follow up, yeah. would, would there be any sight lighting or bollards or anything along the entry drive or anything like that, post lights at all between the carriage house and the evergreens or... Mm, that's not not at this time. That's yeah. not part of this right. uh, application. Though there, uh, the one site feature that I is um, that we are contemplating, and I think it was on the site plan. I can't remember. Is a uh, uh, a granite bench at the top of the drive, and that is intended as a to sort of mark. Uh, the boundary of vehicular traffic. Mm. Yeah. That would be south of the path. South yeah. of the path. Yeah, it was on the plan, I guess. It does say that. It said a, a, I feel, I, it looks like some of it, the, some of the annotation was cut off, but it says, you know, a physical barrier between ADA drop off and path, a granite bench or similar, you know, to be determined. Mm -hmm. Nick, are there people from the public who would like to ask questions? 
I guess we could ask if anyone wants to raise their hand. There's, I don't, I'm not seeing any hands raised. Do we have any other questions from the commissioners? Not for me. Uh, do we have a motion to accept the certificate? Um, yes, I'll give a motion and just comment as always beautiful research. <laughs> Thank you, Nicole. Do we have a second? I'll second. Thank you, Bruce. Uh, then we'll move to a vote. Um, so, Nicole. Yes. Uh, Greta. Bruce. Yes. Uh, Karin. Yes. Uh, Betty. Yes. Steve. Yes. And I agree. So thank you very much for your interesting presentation and for designing such a nice uh, replacement. Uh, we'll be happy I, to grant you the certificate. Thank mm. you for that. And thank you for the opportunity and um, the really helpful observations in, in the conversation. We appreciate it very much. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Lovely, lovely place. Great. Nancy, could I ask uh, Nate a question? Yeah. Nate, I, uh, that was a, a fairly uh, elaborate package. And I went looking back through the emails that you sent, looking for a link to the uh, the, the packets. And, and I tried online to find it while we were talking about it because the uh, presentation that uh, I think Jane was showing us was 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 not very clear. Uh, the, it wasn't crisp and it, or it wasn't big enough. I don't know. And I couldn't see as much as I wanted to. Uh, did you are you in the habit of sending us uh, links to the packet as uh, Pam is for the planning board? Yeah, you... I yeah I sent I sent an email out, didn't I? I'm yes. Yes. I, I just couldn't. I, I searched yeah. through your all the emails I received from you in the in, in about five or ten minutes ago, and I couldn't see the link. I saw the number of emails. We had the the uh, legal notice, and and there were, um, I, and then of course there was a couple of others. Maybe they were, um, maybe they weren't uh, links to the packet. Maybe they were the, um, documents. Pure and simple. I can't remember. Anyway, it would, uh, I didn't. Uh, uh, I did visit each of the sites, but I didn't see any documentation that was uh, posted. So maybe I'm not looking hard enough here. Steve, did you have something to say? Yeah, I, I was just wondering. If, <clears throat> I I I did locate the link and I looked at it, but is there any way we can be sent this stuff as attachments? You know, for us uh, Luddites. I think the issue there is it. We still have two hearings left. I just, but um, yeah. the, I think the issue is that some of these are larger files, and it's difficult to send emails. So, you know, I would have to be sending, you know, multiple emails, seven emails, or something. Mm -hmm. And so, um, I think that's the, you know, kind of why we do the online and and the online packets also for others, you know, the public to view as well. So, yeah. Yes, I just need to get my link. Uh, a bookmark link directly to that uh, site. I think the one that I have at the moment was uh, somehow it, it had information on the on the uh, on our commission and and so forth, but it didn't have. Um, it didn't I think have it a came link. in the second or third uh, email about today. But it's email. not a direct link. It just takes you to the town site, and then you have yeah. But then you just click on it on the town site. You yeah. have to go through the folders. It's not right. Yeah. It doesn't go right to the yeah, meeting right date. To, right to the folders. Yeah. I have a hard time too. Uh, okay. Well, let's move on then to the third item, which is 19 McClellan Street. Do we have someone here to talk to us? If anyone's here for 19 McClellan, you could raise your hand. I seem to remember last time 19 McClellan was on, we had uh, three continuations waiting for someone to show up. Yeah, I mean, um, I don't see any hands being raised. <clears throat> I can. Um... <clears throat> yeah, I mean, um... so on 19 McClellan, they're proposing to put a rear entry on the back of the building with stair, a stoop and a roof. Um, 
I'll share my screen in a moment. Let's see the. Yeah, so let's see here if this is the existing uh if this is visible on yep. the back of the house back here they're proposing to where there's um just right back in this area to put the doorway in. So the idea um, is to put a, a new door in and these are the plans a, a roof and you know stoop and stairs to match what was already that was existing um to match this existing uh, stairs. So it'd be a second set of, you know, second stoop coming off. Yeah. And what's the purpose of that? If there's a, um, with that porch, is, is there another entrance? So currently there's no, um, <clears throat> there's no entry here. So there's a laundry room that would be open to tenants. So the, these stairs are, um, go up in the back and so they're not accessing this this area this uh this area in the in the house um well i have this if i may nancy if i have yeah, the same okay. problem with this as i did last time this was on that we we just didn't it's, it's, it's extremely primitive documentation um and uh what are we exactly approving i mean i i, I think uh I have no trouble approving the concept but uh but what are the materials being used and uh and, uh, and so forth is is there a, 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 i i tried to look closely at that scribble mm -hmm. that was presented uh and i didn't see i i guess i didn't see it I, I, it was up not long enough for me to see whether there were materials mentioned there, or maybe the applicant has told you, Nate, what's intended there. But uh, uh, I mean, I think it matters. We know what it's made of. Yeah, as far as I, the way I read it was that it would all be pressure treated. So it would, um, you know, the way it, it's described is um, to match what's there. So I'm guessing that the, the stoop and everything would be, um, you know, this is pressure treated framing, landing stairs, you know, post baluster, similar to existing rear railing system. Mm. I have to say, I have a problem with using pressure treated lumber above uh, the the deck level. I mean, it's people do it all the time, and it's kind of stupid and infuriating. It's stupid because it's 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 a lousy quality of southern yellow pine. It it, it gives splinters whenever you look at it. It's a very. It doesn't take paint. It's a. It's a really awful material, and we accept it simply because it doesn't rot. And there's absolutely no need uh, for it to be pressure treated in areas where it's not going to rot, and it won't rot where it dries. And and anything that's up in the air, like columns and and rafters and balustrades and all of that sort of stuff, um, isn't going to rot. I mean, it will eventually, of course, but but it's 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 it doesn't need to be uh, pressure treated. Pressure treated wood looks ugly because it can't easily be painted. Um, and I think it's really not consistent with uh, with the uh, historic, uh, with with the look of the neighborhood. I, I, it's only consistent with stuff that was done before we existed and people came along and did these egregiously horrible things, thoughtlessly, stupidly, mindlessly. And uh, I think we're here to put a stop to that. Uh, Karen, I agree with Bruce and having just uh, gone there to look at it, I, uh, the pressure treat, it is such a foreign element in a, what is actually quite an attractive old house. Um, and they're proposing to put another kind of relatively massive pressure treated next to the others. So it's going to be overwhelming. And I agree, it's going to be pretty ugly. And uh, I, I don't like it at all. So I think the 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 form is fine, the material above deck level is not, in my view. Betty, I I was a little unclear about where where this is. If you could go back to the images, 
um, because in the narrative of this discussion, I think people saw it as differently than I did. I wanted to make sure I have the right um, section, right place. Sure, let me, um, I'll, I'll um, show Google Street View, how's that? Yeah. Because while you're looking at that, Nate, with uh, Elizabeth, I was I went there. I drove around and I thought, why are they asking for a stair in a new entry? It's already there. Because I was looking at the back, and uh, yeah, it's on the other side, though it's hard to see from this. Yeah. So here, yeah, I drove. It, yeah, I drove by too. Yeah. So it's 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 back yeah, here. It's on yes. this. one there. That's right. It's, it's, okay. It's right where the. That's the, there. Yeah. Okay, so then my question was just to the right of that, what is that up beneath that window? Over right. to the right. You make your, yeah, right yeah, there. What yeah. is that? That looks that's like what it's, I, right. So that's another, that's a uh, probably a second entry stoop with a step or two down out of the yeah. this unit. So there'd be three in a row. Is that what you're, is that what the proposal right. is? Right. Uh, what are they going to do with the one on the right that looks? I think, I think everything is going to remain. I think this space becomes a common laundry for the tenants. So it has its own entry. Can I, can I yeah. uh, interject? Yeah. Can we, can we weigh in on people not showing up? I mean, I, you know, I thought we talked about this on the one project on pairing. I don't think we should make any determinations if no one shows up to answer our questions. I don't even think we should be addressing this. If no one's here. So I think, yeah, yeah if, if that's, you know, I, if um, it is difficult, I think there has been, you know, there's a lot of questions with the what's been submitted. So we have until the end of March until, you know, we have, um, you know, certain, you know, 60 days to issue a, a determination. And so we have time if this were, were continued. And at that something that makes it contingent that they need to I mean, why are we on the clock if they are remiss about showing up? Isn't it yeah. something upon them to show up? Yeah, I mean, it is. I, you know, I encourage everyone, every applicant to attend the hearing to present or answer questions. And so it may be that, um, you know, this it's happened before with this contractor or property owner. And so it's either, a, um, you know, miscommunication or they're not, you know, they're not, familiar with getting onto a zoom meeting but i you know it's i don't i'm not sure exactly why yeah i mean i think as a policy and i hate to be a hard ass about it but i think as a policy if someone doesn't show up we, there's no point to even have a discussion and i unless in terms of um being on the clock you say we why are we on the clock if somebody doesn't is there something in the bylaws that says that we have a certain time if they don't show up or no it does it, it really is you know they've submitted what you know we could say is a complete application they paid the fee and so that starts the clock the um i think you know the commissions could have the you know you could deny it and say you know these are the plans aren't sufficient uh they're not you know provide enough information they're not detailed enough or scaled or what you know there's a number of reasons you could continue it you know you we have until march 25th to make a determination and so you know, if we were going to meet in March, mid-March anyways, we can continue the hearing and this could be the first item on the agenda for that meeting. And if they don't show then, it could be denied. You know, the applicant could issue, we have a, a waiver, they could waive the date, you know, the time limits. And so this could go on longer. Um, and so, you know, that's kind of the three options. You could deny, continue, or, you know, have them continue it more. Um, so if we continue it, we can deny it, and then they have to yeah. clock this talk. Right, yep. Yeah. Okay. I would move to continue it then, because there's just so okay. many questions that people have. Second. Do we have a I'll second? Yes, I'll second Steve's motion. We'd have to continue it to a time and date certain. So um, let's see, one, two. You know, if we want to meet in mid-March, you know, we typically would be Mondays. I mean, I don't know if... I mean, March 11th, I mean, is that a Monday, March 11th? Oh, let me look. Oh, I'm not sure that I'll be here that yeah, No, I won't day. be here. 
works for me. Well, we, I think we have two members. I can't make Pay with it. Me. Mm -hmm. I can do the 18th or the 13th. The 12th. Well, I'm actually on the 12th. I mean, the 18th works still. We have, you know, we have time after that even if we needed to. So, and is that, can anyone communicate to this contractor or the land property owner that they really need to show up? Or do they just know that all, the only thing they're going to hear is that there's a continuum? I'm not going to hear that. No, no. I, I mean, I actually, when they didn't show up, I just sent another email to the contractor saying, can you join now? You know, they I we alert them through our permitting software and send, you know, the public notice is mailed to the owner. And I mean, there's a few different ways that they've been notified. And so I'd communicate, I'd I try to at least get a confirmation they can bend. I'll, they, I, you know, I'll tell them that it's been continued to this date. And if you don't show, it'll be denied. I mean, I think okay, that's, that's, good. Man, that's I, I think that's the message that we would like to send. Yeah. Uh, so that, uh, so we're talking about the 18th. I can attend the 18th, but we'll need to be off the meeting at 515. Um, I could do the 12th or the 13th. I think I won't be here on the 18th. I could maybe tune in, but. I'll be, I'll be okay for the 18th. I'm okay for the 18th. Rita, can you do the 18th? I have ju jury duty on the 12th, but any other date works. Okay, if I let, let's make it the 18th then, if that's okay. Karen, I'm sorry. <laughs> So 18th at three, we can say that this will be continued to? Yeah. Do we need to take a, a, a vote on that, Nate, or? We do, yeah. Okay, so uh, we've had a motion and a second. Uh, so, uh, Betty? Aye. Aye, yes. Dave? Yes. Karen? Yes. Uh, Bruce? Yes. Bruno? Yes. Nicole? Yes. And yes, from me also. So uh, this will be continued to March 18th at 3 p.m. And if they don't show uh, at that one, it will be denied. That takes us to our final one, which is 58 Sunset. Would you like to make a presentation? Do we have anybody here, Nate? Yeah, uh, I think so. 58 Sunset, if someone's here, you could raise hands. Looks like we've got three people. Mm -hmm. Or at least one person, Carl Woodwell. Yeah, he'll be promoted to panelist, Carl. I'm just pulling up the information on online. All right. Thank you for coming, Carl. Uh, Nate, do you want to summarize what this is about? Yeah, I mean, you know, the 58 Sunset there, um, you know, there's work happening on the interior of the structure and, you know, what's happened is they're proposing some exterior lighting near the entry, which needs local historic district review. So, you know, as far as I understand, there's no other elements of the renovation project that need your review except for this exterior lighting. And so there's, you know, two or three sets of lights, you know, kind of lights right around the entry portico that is part of this application. Carl, are there things you would like to tell us about this? Um, I don't think there's uh, much that I have to add. I'm happy to answer any questions. Um, yeah, we are proposing to add a few lights on the front of the building. Um, also, just uh, in the interest of full disclosure, so no one's surprised, uh, we do have a um, addition to the scope of work on the back of the house that's being processed right now. So there will be another, um, you know, that, that will come through in a subsequent hearing. Uh, but right now we're just looking at those lights on the front of the house. And are those down, uh, down lights? I can, let me share my screen and uh, if that, if this visible, the, um, let me just, it's, it's funny, no one can see the toolbar, but sometimes it is in the way. It's, it's funny that that happens. Um, this is the front of the house. So there's this front entryway. There's proposed to be, there had been existing wall sconces. You can see the plates in the back, but there'll be two wall sconces there, you know, a ceiling light here and then two, um, we'll call them spotlights out front. And so the, uh, if we, so this would be the the downcast spotlights. You know, they can be, I guess they'd be angled how, you know, where needed. Here's the ceiling light inside. So that's, you know, that's, 
slightly visible, I guess, uh, depending on how it's, um, you know, might not be visible from the street. Um, and then here are the wall sconces. Hmm. Oh dear, look at those. Wow. And so, you know, they are cover. You know, they are covered. They are still under the, the um, the beam here, the portico. I guess my only question um, would be, for the lighting out here, is there any exterior conduit or anything to get the wiring here, or is it, you know, you know, you're gonna drill through this and then have them, you know, just be mounted on a, a plate too, or is, you know, how, how, how will they be wired to get up? We will yeah, we would um, drill through and uh, there would be some um, conduit that would be up on the inside of the ceiling um, right. that would run back to the house and be painted to match the ceiling. Right, so it'd be underneath. It wouldn't be visible from right. here. Yeah. yeah. Are there questions from commissioners? Yeah. Betty. I have a question. I wasn't sure I understood where the spots were going to be located. <clears throat> Is the arrow mean that's the place you're going to see that exterior fixture pointing down? Yes, the intention is to mount them basically right above the columns on the fascia, uh, and they would be pointed down at the walkway that leads up to that entrance. Yeah, I, I don't think that's in keeping with the, the lighting in the neighborhood or for this historic house. But maybe Bruce has something specific to say. I don't know if he agrees with me. Bruce? Uh, I, I, I kind of do. I, I, I When I first saw this and uh, I thought, uh, wow, that doesn't seem like a good place to put lights, uh, consistent uh, and so forth. And then I saw the fixtures themselves and I thought, thought, well, they're pretty elegant looking and they're pretty re 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 recessive. And, 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 and that is definitely true of the, uh, the proposed sconces that you've got. Uh, I think uh, they will uh, do very well. And the ceiling light, I, uh, uh, we don't know how far up that uh, well of the ceiling goes, but my guess is you won't see it. Uh, that certainly should be a goal, uh, not just from a, a sorry point of view, but just so that you don't get hit with the glare too until you get, you know, very close to the step. The these outdoor uh, these uh, lights at the end. Um, uh, I guess the goal of them is to illuminate the sidewalk, but. Uh, I mean, the, the, the footpath, the entry footpath, but it seems that what they'll end up doing is blinding the uh, the person who's coming towards the building. Um, uh, maybe not. I mean, I'm, I'm, uh, can you go back to the, uh, to the elevation again? And I'll ask um, Carl a question then. Sure. I was just going to say that these, these lights are, you know, um, like three by five inches or two by five inches. I mean, they're not, very oh, big very, fixtures. Yes, I know. That's why I say when I saw the fixtures themselves, and the size of the profile, the way they'll be mounted and everything, I I thought uh, I'm not so uh, not so concerned as I was initially. Um, I'm wondering, uh, Carl, would they be mounted above the uh, in in the upper band um, above the column, or the lower band above the column? I have to say, I'd prefer the upper band. I think the upper band would be our preference as well. Um, yeah. Although, to be perfectly frank, I don't think we nailed down an exact height on them at this point. So. Yeah. So, um, so um, Betty, I, I asked my opinion, uh, and I guess I think. I think it's one of those things where um, we're moving with the times that th this is probably uh, a, a a thoughtful addition to an old building with a new product. Um, uh, which is, you know, I, some of my, I, I'm, I'm somewhat uh, 
I'm supportive of, of I, I'm not supportive of, of locking in the looks of all of the buildings in the district to uh, what they would have looked like. I, I think we should allow for some uh, um, for, for the for the for the for the you know for a hundred years from now for the twenty first century to have its story uh, have its have its chapter in the story of this building is a one way of putting it. I, I think when we were looking at house a house on sunset uh, that um, my former office brought that was for um, the Fitzgeralds. Um, things were it, it it was it looks a little different than it would have done when it was originally built some of the materials and finishes but we thought it was um and metal roofing i think generally speaking is often that case so i i it's a good question betty but i i actually think as i'm talking my way into it now that i think that 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 is those fixtures that carl's proposing if they were mounted uh, and the second band above the column that I would find that agreeable. Uh, I guess I'm, oh, sorry. I just, I just want to clarify, where are they going to be mounted? So they're on the exterior of the fascia so that they are visible from the street, just like two little spots coming down, like lights in a museum exhibit or something. So I'm, uh, I'm sharing my screen again. So this is an older street view just because it's visible. Right. So here's the front of the house. And so they would be mounted right, right there here to illuminate this short walkway. So if we, you know, here's a 2009 street view, the trees are, are growing up, so it's harder to see, but yeah, you know, so that, you know, so here you, you know, you'd see it on this upper um, band right here. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, that's okay. actually very helpful. Nate, because it shows that it isn't a walk that comes straight out, but it goes, it, it's a band that rips around. And I can see these fixtures doing a very nice job of illuminating, illuminating the planting on either side, which would then reflect into the, uh, uh, basically put some light out into the landscape beyond the building. So my, my concern about being blinded and by them, I think probably I can see how they would be directed in a way that would probably be quite nice. Nicole? So I'm I'm warming to the idea. Nicole. Um yeah, I guess clarification on whether it's illuminating the stairs or the walkway, like how far you're wanting the light to project. Because my first thought was hoping that they could be hidden underneath like mm -hmm. the smaller one that you had suggested right by the door um because i do feel like they um are quite just out of place um so then secondly if it is the whole walkway that you're wanting to kind of put the spotlight on um i don't know if this commission has discussed just you know smaller lights just along the sidewalk um rather than being attached to the um entry um, to answer your second question first um there were actually initially some uh just small solar lights along the walk um and the the concern there is actually if you were to look at the uh, photo that was being shared a moment ago with the markups on it. I think you can see the um, snow accumulation um, because the walk, the that walk is a single monolithic um, piece of stone that extends basically uh, kind of right under the edges of the plantings there. Yeah. Um, and so in order to get, uh, you know, the typical walk lights that you might put along the side of the walk, they have to be kind of into the plantings um, and the uh, snow buildup um, blocks and or upsets them uh, as we got into this this winter season they were uh, all being obstructed um, so the hope is to get some lighting that is you know further up so that in the winter um, you know especially when it's needed most for an icy walk uh, that we don't have to worry about the lights getting buried in the snow. Um, and to your first question, 
Uh, I think that they could be located on the underside of the porch roof. Um, part of our hope here is to get the lights as high as possible so they can have as downward of an angle as possible to both not, uh, as Bruce had said before, blind someone as they're uh, approaching um, or to, you know, be casting more towards the, the public way. Um, so yeah, so them. then I was wondering if even going higher so that they're hidden in the next overhang. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like below, below the overhang so that they're yeah. like mounted and down. You mean coming through the uh, soffit? I, I, yeah, yeah, I get, evidently. Uh, Cal, can you do that? Can you get, uh, can you access? Uh... It's a pretty flat. Um, yeah. You get it through the ceiling, I guess. I don't know, but, but that might be nice to have the lights uh, um, out at the corners um, in the uh, mounted on the soffit there and in the mm -hmm. opposite corner. Right, then they would just be hidden more. They would be hidden more, but I, you'd still see them. But as I say, I don't think I don't have a problem with that so much because I like the look of them. I think they're 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 selected consistent with the the, the form of the. We've got some subtle curves in this uh, building. Those those things that are sticking out there are called medallions. Those medallions have got a curvaceous. Uh, uh, profile to them, and I think these lights have got a little bit of the same. I th I think they would look well, and I think they would look better where Nate's uh, cursor is right now. But Carl, what do you think about that? Have we still got Carl? Yeah, I mean, I have to stop my sharing to be able to see. Oh, it I looks think, like... I think we've lost Carl. I think we... Oh, he's he's back. Oh, there he is. He's in the attendee list. Yes. I, uh, Carl, you're promoted again to panelists. About that, I'm not sure what happened. It just all went down. <laughs> yeah, hopefully it wasn't anything I hit. I, <laughs> when I'm sharing my screen, I can't see the everyone, everyone else. It's only... Yeah, I don't. At home, it's a little different. I don't know what happens here at work. So, so Carl, how much did you get of what was discussed in the last five minutes? Uh, where, so, I where, where did you leave off? Um, I realized I was disconnected after I was starting to um, uh, ask a follow up question to um, the question about whether or not they could be located even higher uh, than on that the freeze that we had initially discussed. Right. Yeah, so that's what we were talking about. Could they be up on under the soffit on the corners or something is what was being discussed. I think that's a possibility. Um, it's uh, I, I think we would certainly be open to it. Have to have to go back to the site and just look at um, how we might be able to do that. Um, there might be some feasibility questions about how we can get wires to there without a surface mounted conduit that we're trying to avoid, but I think it's something we could certainly explore. Very well may work. All right, Karen, do you still have a question? Oh. I was thinking in that picture, um, it was very clear that it's probably for safety reasons, it's very important to get lights on exactly where this is going to go because of the way the stairs are. I can see in the winter and you want to be sure to focus that there is that stair there. It's it's a little bit unusual. So um, I, I think these fixtures are probably pretty appropriate. And if you can put them in a way uh, where they're least visible, um, that's good. But if not, I agree. I think they're it, they're not bad. They're pretty good. Uh, I think we have a question from uh, an attendee, Nate. Sure. Hilda, you can unmute yourself. Well, if it were my house, I would wonder if maybe the two lights could go on the north or east corner rather than across the front corners where everybody would see it. That's one suggestion. Or can you put a, a lantern 
somewhere at the end of the driveway where it it's a short looks like a short sidewalk so if you had a downcast lantern in an appropriate style it may be more effective and less intrusive on the house that's my suggestion if it were my house that's what i i would put the lamp probably and not touch the house Do we have any other Thanks, comments? Uh, is th there's no one other attendee. If there's any other comments, you can raise your hand. I don't, I don't see any hands. Uh, Bruce has a question or comment. Yes, it was. Well, first of all, I was. Uh, I noticed Shirley was there, Shirley Griffin, and uh, I noted because uh, Ms. Griffin had uh, submitted the public comment, uh, Carl, before the meeting by email, um, and. Uh, a number of concerns expressed, which are probably ones that we would uh, address. But one of them had to do with color temperature, which we typically don't uh, deal with, and nor probably do we have the power to uh, specify and so forth. But there was an expression for from this uh, member of the public that the color temperature of the fixtures be around twenty seven hundred uh, Kelvin uh, color, you know, which is a fairly warm light. Um, I didn't look closely enough at those fixtures, but do you know whether the fixtures that you were proposing would uh, uh, would have that? And maybe you don't necessarily have to answer, it, but perhaps what I should say is that uh, it would seem that uh, some of the uh, your your neighbours would prefer a, a warmer colour temperature if that's what your clients are inclined to uh, uh, want. Precisely I don't think... what we specified is twenty seven hundred. Okay. Well, that's that's that, that's it, and then we're down on that one. Um, oops, uh, my dog is getting excited. Uh, my wife must be about to come home. Uh, I uh, now a question, Nate, for procedurally. Mm -hmm. um, I would uh, be uh, supportive of a certificate, certificate of appropriateness for the lights in the uh, upper band of the. Uh, corners there, but I would prefer, as I think other uh, commissioners might as well, for them to be uh, mounted in the soffit. And it would seem to me that that might, might actually be more functional because the soffit projects out from the uh, plane of the, and, and, and the, having them further out from the face would allow uh, a, a downlighting and, and, and elimination of that entry. Um, uh, a little more effectively. So there might be some functional benefit to be able to get them in the soffit as opposed to be on the uh, on that uh, that kind of uh, corners. So, um, but if we were to move and grant a certificate of appropriateness based on, uh, predicated on them being in the soffit, uh, Carl doesn't yet know that that's uh, easy to do, and certainly we wouldn't want it to be done at the expense of surface-mounted conduits, I don't think, and I'm sure the, the building owners wouldn't either. Can we... Um, well, I, I could ask you, Carl, if we were to condition, if we were to grant a certificate of appropriateness uh, conditioned upon uh, them, the, the two out, the, the two uh, downlights, tough spotlights being mounted in the soffit, how would you feel about that? Because if you couldn't do that, you'd have to come back. We don't really want you to come back. Um, that's for business. I mean, that's time and so forth. So yeah, I was going to say, Bruce, I think what you, in everything you said, I think there could be a condition that the preference is a soffit mounted. And if, you know, if that's not feasible or if surface conduit is necessary, then, uh, then in the upper band. And I think that's something where, you know, I, I could work with Carl and the building inspector or electrical inspector to determine if it's not feasible, right? So we, you know, wouldn't be just like, oh, we looked I at it. I can't be bothered, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that being the case, I would so move, uh, I guess, uh, uh, that we uh, grant a certificate of appropriateness uh, to the applicant and dress and all of that sort of business um, for the uh, uh, for the five fixtures as proposed uh with the condition that the three that the two uh, down uh, uh, down spots um, 
be mounted if possible in the uh, soffit of the veranda as opposed to the cornice of the structure above the columns. We have a second. Second. Uh, then we'll move to a vote. Uh, Karen? Well, just do, do we... Oh, okay. I, I wonder whether people, because I just uh, I, I just made that motion, but I wasn't sure that everybody understands it or wants to maybe adjust it in some way. I mean, is everybody happy with that? Or potentially happy with that? <laughs> Seems like it's okay. Uh, Karen? So I second it and I vote yes. Okay, uh, Betty? Uh, yes. Frida? Yes. Bruce? Yes. Steve? Yes. Nicole? Yes. And I also vote yes. So uh, we are granting you that certificate and we hope that you'll be able to uh, put them where we prefer, but uh, we understand that that might not be possible. Thank you very much for coming, Carl, to the meeting and for responding to all our questions. Thank you all. I appreciate it. Thanks. So it looks like we, um, you know, the hearing's been continued for the one uh, property till March. There may be additional applications that come in then. If not, that could also be a public meeting where we could talk about other business. Um, you know, there's some possible applications coming in. Usually spring gets busy when people are planning projects. So, you know, nothing, um, <clears throat> nothing yet actually for any any others but i know there's been some property owners or you know people have been asking so it may be that that is also you know there may be another product or two that's um heard at that at that date okay uh before we adjourn i wanted to uh say a thank you to steve for and congratulations to steve for his grant uh oh yeah thank you um thank you. well you know it's, it's the big hurdle is this um uh, CPA committee giving it the thumbs up. It still has to go to the, the finance committee and then get rubber stamped, hopefully, by um, the town council. But that seems to be usually pretty rote. I do have one question, though, Nate, why would that subject it is up? The mailings um, for when we go public is, I mean, but we, I, we got a $20,000 grant, and I'm actually meeting with Chris Skelly in March. Um, to go over what you know is to be done, but I'm just wondering: is um, should we budget the whole thing for him, or do we need to preserve any money for mailings and xeroxing or that kind of stuff? Uh, yeah, I think maybe if we kept like twenty five hundred. Okay. Um, because the town yeah. doesn't pick up the mailings to the, the butters and all that kind of stuff. Uh, we do, but. <clears throat> Um, you know, it could be a, it could be substantial or depending on what, what else we might want. Um, you know, his, you know, I think we could, if you work with him, Steve, to refine the budget, I guess we could just see where, you know, what the cost would be. And, you know, if, if, if he needs the full amount, then he has, needs the full amount and we can cover the, cover all, you know, all the other costs. Okay. okay. Good to know. Thank you. Okay. Does anybody want to meet with him with me or, uh, meeting with him on, uh, March 12th? at three o'clock. And Chris Skelly used to be the head of the Massachusetts Historical Commission. So he's good. Anyway, if anybody is- I'll do it. I'll do it. I have jury duty. <laughs> you know what? I think I have jury duty in, in March too, early March at some point. I should remember. I think jury duty might be more fun. <laughs> uh, let me make sure I have the right date. Yeah, it's um, Elizabeth. It's actually it's eleven a.m. on March twelfth. Oh, where? Uh, he was going to meet at my house, and I was going to show him everything on Dropbox, and then we were going to go to the site and look at the um, mm -hmm. look at the you know the buildings. And Nate, I shouldn't. I have another guy that would be interested, but do we need to do do competitive bidding or whoever we want to hire is fine? And how does that work? 
Yeah, for kind of architectural uh, services, it, there's an exemption under procurement, so I can just confirm that. But I, I think that this type of service would fall under that kind of design, architecture, engineering study work. So. Okay, and one last thing before we adjourn, you guys have hired someone to do the downtown design standards now, right? Right. Okay. Yeah, so. Yeah, so yeah, Dotson and Flinker from Florence, Mass was hired. We had a review committee and we, you know, the town issued proposals to find a consultant or a team to develop downtown design standards. And that process will be starting later this month or early March. So staffs met with them twice. Uh, we're trying to line up um, stakeholder meetings actually later this month and have them start a public engagement process um, in the next two to three weeks. It won't, it, you know, it doesn't necessarily, or it may, include areas in, in a local historic district, but I don't know if it does right now. Um, but, you know, the idea would be it's a 18 month long process and maybe some of the things that they develop, we could incorporate into design guidelines or things, but it but, will. Um, but they're doing downtown. That's what they're doing. Right, I mean, you know, we've generally said, here's the downtown. It's kind of up to them to decide, you know, what, you know, what, how far do they study? Is it, you know, South Prospect and North Prospect to Kendrick Park to, you know, right. It's not just like North Pleasant Street and Main Street. There is a some geographic area that I think they, you know, staffs kind of outlined a an area, and they would, you know, part of the public process would be determining where people would look. Well, remember, if you recall, we basically said that we would like table right. pursuing an LHD downtown contingent upon the binding design guidelines. Right. That's what they're working on, correct? Right, right, right. Yeah. I'm just saying that it's not. You know, it may overlap uh, with some of the lo yeah. Lincoln Sunset local historic district, which would be fine. Um, you know, so we're, we've asked to have a pretty big area that they start with and then refine what where the design standards could apply, but at least look at a big area to determine what's kind of the architecture and character of and downtown. And will we be consulted as they do it? I mean, we have so much expertise now on our, on our panel. Yeah, so part of the process is stakeholder groups, and then they have, you know, a lot of public uh, workshops they're planning. And so, you know, we'd invite a number of boards and committees to attend and then, you know, try to get a representative or two as stakeholders or a working group to attend. So uh, I think there's going to be plenty of opportunity for comment and review. Okay, great. Nate, we also had um, discussed some changes to the uh, bylaws bylaw. so that, yeah, with regard to parking in particular, what, right. what is What's happening with that? Yeah, that's on me. I have to work. I just have to, um, if there's some language, I think we, we have to, I think we should probably, hopefully in March, let's in March say we'll review the language. Uh, we've already looked at, a, at it once or twice. And uh, if we think it's good, then we have to, um, we'll have to like forward it on to council for their consideration. Thank you. Yeah, I think it's, you know, right. It's in draft form. I think we just need to kind of finalize it and just say yes, you know, or like, okay. Let's put that on the agenda for March then. Yeah. Uh, is there anything else that people would like to raise before we adjourn? You know, actually, I would just for the record, Ed Wolford um, passed away. I don't know. He was very instrumental mm -hmm. yeah. in doing the research for um, the North Prospect Lincoln Sunset LHD. So I guess I'd like to put in the record, um, you know, our appreciation. Uh, to him. Yeah. Yeah, he came into town hall. Um, in, you know, in the last few months, I met with him a number of times, and he <laughs> he offered his uh, he was trying to find a place to keep a lot of his records, and I I never heard back, and I said, you know, if no one else will take them, we, we can find a place. Maybe it's something else to figure out. I think he did a lot of the original work on the East Amherst district as well. Mm -hmm. Anyway, God bless him. Rest in peace. And Hilda has her hand raised again. We, Hilda, you want to, um, you can unmute yourself. Dumb question. Bear with me. What was the name of the material that was going to be used on the Austin Dickinson carriage post? Boral. B O R A L. Yeah. B O R A L. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. I like yeah, to be, I like to be accurate. I can't tell. Well, when you write this off, write mention Ed Wilford. I would like, um, um, please tell me what. 
when you write this off for the Indy, please mention Ed Wilford. Look, at Ed Wilford would catch my husband in front of the street, stop <laughs> all the traffic for half an hour and tell him about what he was stuttering that day. All the time. Okay. <laughs> they were good friends. Good. So yeah, I think, yeah, if you look up Borel, I think it's both the the company name and then also the name of the, the type of siding it is. Okay, yeah. it's not yes, Hardy it, Board. Is it like Hardy Board? Um, well, not exactly. Uh, Hardy, uh, so-called generic, is uh, fiber uh, cement, uh, and the fiber is wood, and the cement is cement. Uh, Boral is is a is a comp is made of um, a captured uh, 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 flu ash, fly ash products from. Uh, um, coal burning and so forth so it's it looks the same the, the boral is smoother than the uh than the fiber cement material but they are equally cementitious insofar as they uh, are resistant to any kind of biodegradation and they are equally dimensionally stable uh, from a moisture standpoint they don't move with the uh, yeah, that may be more than the reader wants to know, but I. <laughs> oh, really? I, I think you could probably fit it in. Maybe a footnote, Hilda. <laughs> All right. Do we have a motion to adjourn the meeting? So I move. to adjourn. Thank you, Nicole. The second. You you vote by clicking the red button. Yeah. <laughs> All in favor, click their red buttons. <laughs> Thank you. Very right, much. Thanks, everyone. Take care. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye. -bye.